I'm sure a lot of writers would relate to this and as someone who is really interested in that craft of writing, how do you ensure that you don't dig deep into your dark side you know, when you write? I want to dig deep into my dark side. Why would I not want to? Uh, because doesn't while it scare you, you know, because you're getting in a very vulnerable state, you know. I'm, I'm guessing that you might spill out a secret which you didn't, never wanted to share. It might find its way into your writing somehow. Has that ever happened you know, to you? Um, I, what I, you know, there, there are two, three ways. You know, we, as writers, we're very um, clever people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what we do? We have a lot of we, we draw from a lot of things. Like um, I'll tell you, for example, um, I read somewhere which is very true that writers are very good liars. Number one. Okay. So uh, the thing that I present to you an emotion. It's basically this entire imagination. If you were to see from a perspective of a, a layman, it's it's all a lie. So I have to Convince make you me. believe that right. this is the truth. So in the same way, uh, when I'm talking about an emotion, uh, when I'm, I'm writing about a character going through something very personal and that sense of loss, I have to make it mine. And you know, there, there are times when you feel it, that when you get exhausted. So we are actually living those lies. Right. So that is one way to look at it. And in explaining this, I've forgotten my question. What was the question? To How do you ensure that you don't dig deep yeah, into your so dark dig deep, side? Exactly. Yeah. So one thing is this which is which you will go uh, which we, you will personalize that emotion and then you will throw it back out and the other thing digging deeper into your own emotion I think it's it's very good I think it's very healthy okay. because I feel that like I was telling you that I was going through a very difficult time while I was writing this novel personally and there were a lot of extreme like I got married while I was writing this novel a complete change of city mm -hmm. uh, family uh, a huge loss. So a lot of changes were happening in me and in my life while I was penning this down. And I felt that, you know, uh, that deep unrest actually really helped me bring this character out. And not only that, I also feel that it was a, uh, it was in, in a way a catharsis of sorts that, you know, uh, where you cannot have an outburst, right. a physical out outburst or a violent outburst, it's actually channeled beautifully into words and into a silent world. So I think for me, that's why this book is extremely special because uh, I have uh, emotionally invested in, in this a lot more and uh, this journey has been very, very, very special to me as a person, as a woman, um, as an individual. And the, the, the things that my key character, the emotions that she's going through, the unrest that she's going through, I have felt very closely too. So like for what? me, it has been really all these things that I've been taught, like the question the, of faith, okay, right. loss, um, you know, um, just, just, um, just trying to understand, because you know, when, when there's a, there's a loss, uh, a very personal loss, you, the first reaction is that you tend to question everything mm -hmm. around you, question your way of life. So, uh, and I went that, uh, I went through that phase as well. And I think that really helped, that really helped me in, uh, drawing out this character and you know um, her emotional path have you ever questioned what is your place in this universe you know? what is your goal uh, you know I, i'll tell you strangely i still remember when i was in amritsar there was there used to be this um, temple across the the school and after every uh, like after school i would go and sit there okay okay it was really funny and uncool because first I used to like I used to be a geek with specs with my braces to the T. I was like this geek in school. Um, was the head girl, head of debates, this that, this that. No time for hanging out. I was not the cool kid at all. So you geek would not is want the new to. Cool. <laughs> now now it's the new cool, but trust me, you wouldn't. When I was in high school, nobody wanted to be me <laughs> in that sense because you know I was really really boring. And uh, my interest levels in a lot of extracurricular activities were, I, I, I did not like to party, I didn't like, to, and you know, I, I, miss, I miss that thing now. <laughs> I, I wish I would have done that then. But I was really boring and I was really um, content in my bored existence. But there was one thing that, uh, and why I was so bored at that time, 
I remember in my school days was that there was nothing which was driving me. Mm -hmm. I had no passion. I had no desire to, uh, you know, um, to why am I, why am I here? So there was no, nothing defined. So I would sit there and I would actually question that what is it that I'm supposed to do here? So thankfully, I'm very grateful that that question came to me then. Of course, uh, a lot of people thought I was lunatic. That, you know, if I would discuss it with my friends and they would be like, we don't want to hang out with her because she's asking strange questions. But I'm so glad that those questions came to me then because that's when I realized that, you know, I really enjoy this. Writing is a form of self-expression which not only I enjoy but it also is very important to me as a person. And uh, this is something that gave me a lot of, uh, that defined my journey uh, in a way and I'm so glad that I found this uh, medium of expression. And after that, um, once, once I had discovered this is what I want to do, those questions of why am I here ceased to haunt my soul. You found a purpose finally. I found a purpose. Right. I, f I feel that, you know, finding a purpose, finding that burning desire is very important to justify your existence, at least for people who are looking for those answers. When did you get this, how do I put it, um, enlightenment, you know, uh, which class was this, you know? Enlightenment, oh God. Um, no, you said after school you would go to the temple, right? So no, so uh, that it? trauma of sitting there <laughs> in the temple went on for three, four years. It's not that it just came uh, like I was sitting under a tree and you know I'd get enlightened. But um, you know, there was not one day when I realized that this is what I want to do or oh, the enlightenment like didn't when you were come. about 15 to 17 years old? Yeah, yeah, I was writing since I was the age of 12 actually. Okay. But the fact that I wanted to do this um, would be around 15. It's a long time. Yeah, 14 or 15. I also believe that you had the habit of daydreaming a lot when you were studying in St. Stephen's, uh, going to the Belpuri Bandi and... Who have you been talking to? Uh, I read a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. What were you daydreaming about back then? You know, this was your college. I'm days. telling you, I, I can I can completely zone out. You know, um, and I can start thinking about a story. Forget college. If I'm supposed to go from point A to point B for work, and I'm driving, and I used to drive for some time in Bombay, uh, I used to be driving outside of Bombay. Also, I wouldn't <laughs> realize that I have gone this way or that and my mother said you're dangerous not only because you can't drive properly but you don't even know where are you ending up so you have to stop driving